Hey everyone, it's Kerry Oberbrunner. I have with me a fantastic gentleman, author, man. He is in a beautiful spot. He's ready to have a huge event here right after this. But Eric Solback, and good to see you, my friend. Hey, thanks, Kerry. I'm looking forward to this. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Listen, I'm so glad you did this audiobook. Folks, if you don't know, audiobook is one of the fastest growing publishing platforms. Eric's had a book out for several years. It's done incredibly well. And what I want to talk about today is basically the backstory. So, Eric, why did you feel like it was time to do the audiobook now several years after the print? Well, you know, I think you hit the nail on the head, Carrie. Like, I, I look at kind of what I really started consuming content. And for me, mm. audiobooks is a fantastic way to consume content. And so I'll, I'll put the audiobook on when I'm in the truck or when I'm at the gym. And, you know, depending on how much quick I want to, you know, in, you know, consume it, I can turn it up to two times speed. I can't read two times speed. Yeah, I can sure. listen to two times speed. Right. So there was part of that. And, and also what I really loved about the idea that you came up with, and thank you for this, Carrie. I really, really, really appreciate you is that you said, let's do this audio book, not as just Eric reading the book. Like it's a like typical audio book. You just hear the person, you know, reading the book. This is an, a, a fantastic interview between you and me about the concepts in the book. And we expand on it and go deeper into the actual process of changing the business model for the accountants. So um, that's for me, uh, that's why I wanted to do it so much. And, and, and thank you again for, for, for helping me make this happen. I love it. Well, listen, it is, it was a beautiful treat because I know that CPAs, well, let's face it. I mean, it's one of those professions where, by the way, we got people jumping in from all over. I'm going to ask people to tag friends. I'm going to ask them to tag. In fact, Tanisha tag my CPA, <laughs> Stephanie. Uh, Jabode and and Maloney and Navani. Listen, I know CPAs, and and it's one of the professions that I mean. Is it fair to say that? And I'm not joking when I say it's like suicide rate is high. I mean depression. Yeah. Like, why is this, Eric? Uh, well, accountants are like treated like mushrooms. We're kept in the dark and fed shit. Like, <laughs> to be honest here, like really, and and there's not a lot of love shown to the CPA, right? Um, even though it's funny when you talk to business owners and you say, who are you, who's your number one trusted advisor? And they always say, Oh, my CPA. And it's like, well, when was the last time you talked to them about some business advice? And they're like, um, uh, I don't know. And I said, well, wow. the reason why that is, is because the business model is flawed and that's why accountants, they don't get the, they, they're overworked and undervalued. And mm. so no, you would be depressed too. If you were overworked and undervalued, you'd be stressed and you'd be leaving the profession as well. So, um, you know, for me, it's, it's about showing love to the ones that I care about most because I am a CPA yeah. and you know, I did it for, I did it for 26 years. Yeah. The first 18 years was complete hell. And then the last eight years I shifted the model over, I got my life back. So, um, you know, it doesn't surprise me that that's the case. Right. But see, that's what I love about you. I think it brings credibility. You know, there's a lot of people out there who want to write on a topic that they have zero credibility. The yeah. fact that you walked this path, the fact that you were trading time for money. I'll tell you what, um, Eric, in the last three weeks, I've talked to my CPA 12 times. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm serious. Like, why yeah. did I do that? Because I'm prepping for taxes. I'm prepping for your end money going out, money coming in you know, retirement. I got my finance uh, person on with my CPA. I'm somebody who says like you, like our mentor, uh, who not how. Yeah. Yeah. Dan Sullivan. I mean, yeah. I will literally pay someone to save me time and headaches. Right. Um, how does your book talk about that model of creating value? Well, you see, the interesting thing is that let's go to the core of the problem. Here's the core of the problem is that the accountants, the accountants are overworked and undervalued. That's problem number one. The reason why that is because the business model is flawed. The accounting profession has basically brainwashed accounting accountants and firms, the whole profession into believing what I call three lies. Okay. Mm. One is that their, that their worth is equal to how many hours they work. Ooh. So 
the more you work, the more value you have, because that's how they charge their clients. You charge them by the hour. So if I do, if I work for you for two hours, it's worth two hours times my charge out rate. And that's my value. That's how I create value for you is by basically putting in time, Hmm. which we know as entrepreneurs and business owners, that's not how people pay. They pay, they pay based on value. Yes. So if the value's here and the price is here, you pay. So if I say if the value and the price align, then you sign. If the, the price is here and the value's here, you'll sign. If if or if the price is here and the value's here, you won't sign, right? And so that's what happens is that they get messed around with the value creation because of the model of billing by the hour, mm. right? And so and then they work crazy hours because they think that makes them worth more. That if there's a self worth issue here too. Like I got another book in me. It's I think it's what the hell happened to me, and it'll be the the origin story of the CPA and why we why we why we go through and and basically beat ourselves up through this model is because something happened to us in in a previous life. But anyways, we'll work on that next book. We'll work on that books next time. But so yeah. there's the first lie: it's their worth is equal to how many hours they work. Second mm-hmm. lie is that their clients are naturally price sensitive to their services. Well. Clients aren't naturally price sensitive to accounting services. They're they're price sensitive because of the way we sell our services, the way mm-hmm. we talk to our clients, the way we don't discuss the value that they're going to get as a result of it. We keep talking about how technically difficult it is and how many hours they're going to put in. And instantly you're thinking, how much is this going to cost me? Because the accountant's busy thinking about the input into the work, all the hours, mm-hmm. right? And so the client becomes naturally price sensitive. And then the third lie is that, you know, that they believe that tax time just has to suck. Yes. So that that's the ultimate one. So what happens is the accountants are brainwashed into believing that the traditional model is the only way to go. And so what happens is, is that they just go through another shitty tax season. They go mm-hmm. through another time of stress. They, they just get used to the fact that when they book their time, they stress out and go, oh, I'm gonna, how am I going to bill my client for this? And then they shake when they hand the bill to the client. And the client goes, yeah. what? That much? And then the, internally, the accountant goes, man, they don't value me. They don't trust me. They don't, yeah. you know, it's just anxiety all over the place. And so for me, I just shifted the whole model around. And that's that's what the purpose of the accountant success formula is, is telling the story of how I used to work in that same model. I believe those same three, same three lies, but then I had a, a catastrophic event, shall we say, that woke me up. And so it seems that pain is the touchstone of all growth, right? And so as that as a result of that pain of losing my first partnership, I had to find a new model. And for me, I found a new model that gave me three freedoms instead of the three lies. And the three freedoms that I got, which is money, clients, and time. I made great money. I had clients that appreciated my work. I had a bunch of free time away from the office. And so if any accountants out there that are frustrated or believe that there's more for them out there, this book is for you. So good. That's so good. So think about that for a moment. I love your analogy. I don't pay my dentist more money because it took them four hours to fill a cavity yeah yeah no. right right yeah. like hey we'll get you in the chair for eight hours so we can yeah. charge you more but yeah. yet that's really the lie that accounts yeah, yeah well it's, it's interesting you should say that gary because literally i'm doing an event for dentists tonight oh my so god i've done a collaboration with our good friend don barden and he yes. has a he has a program called the perfect plan and we're taking the four planning pillars from the accountant success formula and putting them together to show dentists how to create better lives for themselves. So it's interesting that you should mention about the dentist, but this is true. If you said to the dentist, well, would your clients pay you more if you spent, if they had to spend twice as long in the chair? And they'd be like, no, that they, they pay me double to spend half the time. Exactly. So when you think about that with the accountants. It's like, well, if, if you spend, if you could get the result quicker for your client and at a bigger and a faster result, they would pay you more. So but that goes down an entire another rabbit hole, which is in the book, which is most accounting firms are trying to make everything efficient. So they keep trying to go faster. I think there's a big problem with that. Mm. Right. They're outsourcing to India. They're creating artificial intelligence to basically do their work. And and so they're trying to do it faster because they think, oh, the clients will want it faster. They'll want this. You know, We're a cloud based accounting firm. If I hear another, you know, that's our differentiating factor. We're in the cloud. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. And the quicker you do something and the cheaper you do something, what does that do in an economic model, Carrie? You and I know this. If your inputs are, are less for across an entire industry, what happens to the overall price? Mm. So eventually they're going to be commoditized and they're going to lose their relevance. And your model, which 
you just shared so great when I interviewed you, it was becoming almost like a trusted confidant where it's really them helping you with the business, which is what my, my CPA does. Um, you know, there's another piece that, um, my CPA helped me with, which was a R and D credit. Yeah. Okay. So this, so there's an example where, you know, entrepreneurs are watching this, uh, you know, our friend Lee Richter, you've heard that name. Yeah. 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 So Lee, Lee shared with me, Carrie, you're writing this book on blockchain. Why don't you, why don't you talk to your CPA about R and D credit? Right. Now I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus, Eric, but like I had to bring that up, you know, like, mm -hmm. sh it, what do you think, man? Like, should, is that an example of where a, a CPA could have said, huh, I'm going to bring that solution to carry. Yes. But you see, here's the problem they could bring you the solution and, and the CPAs that work with me in the accountant success formula coaching program. And, and what I have, and we can talk about that later, but totally the tough, solution right? yeah. um, is that they, they, you need to know more about the client. Interesting. But, but let's think about this for a second. If your client knew that you were writing the book of a blockchain and they went, Oh, this is Carrie's business model. This is how he's building it. This is one of the products that's coming out. Wait a second. He could do an R and D credit on that. Mm -hmm. She could then be there or he or she could be proactive and say, Hey, here's a, here's an opportunity for some tax savings, or here's an opportunity to grow the business a little bit better, but they need to understand your business more. But here's the problem for them to do that. They need to spend time, time, yeah. <laughs> time working on learning about your business yeah, but if they spend time on your business they're going to be putting that in their work in progress and somehow they have to build that to you and oh, how am i going to oh, how do i give carry a bill for five hours of time of finding out just what his business is all about carry's going to lose his mind like he will be upset and so the problem is is the wow. model the model skewed so the accountant can't get to know you about what's going on that's wow. the problem Okay. And, and, and the model is built. It's, so the billable hours that is the, the first culprit. Okay. So there's two parts with the uh, perfect. And you know, I, I like my heavy metal music. So you see me do this a lot. I'm really like, <laughs> yes. There's two, there's two issues, right? One is that there's a billable hour. That's part of the problem. Mm -hmm. And the second part is just banging out tax returns. So the yes. accountants figure the most tax return, the, the accountant who does the most tax returns wins. Wow. Well, the billable hour model stops clients from getting advice when they need it. It also stops the accountant from getting to know you, getting to know Carrie, getting to know that he's coming out with a book on blockchain to get, mm -hmm. hey, there's an opportunity here for a tax credit, okay? It blocks you from that, doing that instead of just, and then they just bang out the tax returns because they don't know anything about you. But in the accountant success formula model, and this is what I learned is after the first 18 years of doing the traditional way, you know, billing by the hour, banging out as many tax returns like yes. that. I then the second eight years, I went, you know what? I'm changing the model. I'm, I, I got to find a way for my clients to learn, for me to learn more about them, for them to want to talk to me more and for me to actually help them build the life they want for themselves, not just do their tax return. And so I tested and tried and I became an entrepreneur basically. And I tested and tried a bunch of different methodologies. I got a lot of scars on my back. I've blazed a trail. I kind of say to my coaching clients, I said, I lead, guide and protect you through this process now because I've been there, I've done it, you know? And so what happens is, is that once you, and, and so what you do is you change your model over. Absolutely. You get your freedom back. And so for me, it was about changing the model and going, how can I get them more assets? Well, I changed from billing by the hour to a subscription-based value pricing model. Mm. It was a monthly amount that the client would pay me, but they could get unlimited access to contact me whenever they wanted. And inside that model, I spent and I built into it that I would get to learn about what I call the four planning pillars. Ooh. Okay. And, and the four planning pillars is a simple kind of conceptual model of how people are trying to build the life they want for themselves. And which is, you know, it's in the book, it's on my website. There's, there's, there's lots of resources on this. Um, and so if you think about it this way, Carrie, it, when you build a house, it's got a roof Yep. and then there's, if it's a simple house, there's four pillars that are holding up that roof. And so if you consider your house like your, your life, you're trying to build it. What are those four pillars that's holding up the roof for a business? Mm -hmm. It would be their business, 
their wealth, their retirement, and then their estate. Those mm. are the four ways of thinking about that. So if the business plan is in alignment and, and it has to be in alignment with the other pillars, because if, if they're not, the house isn't going to be solid. So I kind of yeah. like this to um, most business owners have an accountant. They got a lawyer. They got a financial advisor. They got a banker. They got an insurance person. I mean, it goes on and on. Right. So and they're all working in these different pillars, all working on the same house. All doing different things. The lawyer's doing it, what they think the client, the accountant's doing this, the financial advisor doing that. Can you imagine what a house would look like? Wow. If you built it with an electrician, a plumber, and a roofer, all just doing it based on the plans they think it should look like. The house would look like a mess. Wow. Yes. A whole mess. Well, instead, shouldn't the accountant understand what the overall plan is and then decide whether or not the, what the accountant's doing, is it in alignment with what the lawyer's doing? Is it in alignment with what the bank what the bankers doing is in alignment with the financial planners doing and so when you think about these four planning pillars i go in and i show accountants how to actually find out what those plans are work with oh now here's the big key work with the other financial advisors with the other bankers with the lawyers to say are we all in alignment here with building the life that carrie wants for himself like you mentioned before that your cpa was working with the financial plan and that, yeah. that that's music to my ears man like that's, oh, that's fantastic. Good. Yeah. So for me, though, once I changed the billing model over and I built in enough profit on the subscription model, I was able to work with the clients on the four planning pillars. I right? like this. Yeah. And then then what happened was is I could start helping the client build the life they wanted for themselves. Mm. So once so you're good. helping the client build the life they want for themselves, they are happy to pay you more. They're happy to because the value is higher. Absolutely. Way higher value. And so what happened was is that I ended up now working a single hour of overtime in my practice. My clients loved to pay me more money and I had cash flow coming in all the day. So I had the three freedoms and that's wow. what that's formula is for the account. So it, it helps the business owner and it helps the account. I, I totally see how that works. In other words, if the metric is how many tax returns can you bang out in your example? Yeah. You don't even lift your eyes to think about, I got time for you. You're just yeah. like, I got to do the next one. I got to do the next one. But yeah. you're saying really that you work deeper with the clients, but not wider. You don't have as many perhaps, but the ones that you do, you probably, would you agree that you probably feel even more like a hero? I mean, if, if you're helping me 10 X my business rather than just incremental, you're probably like, dude, I, I, I have a ton of value. What do you think? Oh, totally. And, and and so, you know, and I love that, you know, who's the target here? Who's, you know, again, a Dan Sullivanism, who's, who are we trying to be the hero to? And so for me, it was the business owner, but it wasn't so much. And, and here's a clarifying point. And a lot of accountants have said this to me. Well, like Eric, they're like, Eric, I, I don't know how to 10 X the business. I don't know how to 10 X the wealth. I don't know how to 10 X the retirement. Uh, I know can, I know how to do estate planning, but mm -hmm. I don't know these other things. And I said, you don't have to know how to do those things. And again, I'm going to, we're going to bring up more Dan here than anything else. Okay. There's more, there's the who, the who is the financial planner and they're building the wealth over here. But the accountant, if they can understand wow. what the plan is, they can make a decision and go, you know, we've got the business structure yeah. wrong over here. It needs to be moved and we need to set up a holding company or a family trust. Or we need to do this so that that money that's spinning out is building the wealth properly for the financial advisor and building an estate over or building real estate over here or whatever. And working with the business, say there's a business coach. The business coach wants to grow the business. They Well, then how much cash flow and what capital do you need in the business? So the accountant doesn't have to be the specialist in all things. And that's where most accountants get caught there. But I don't know how to do all that stuff. Eric. Yeah. And I know, I know, I know. Neither do I, but I don't have to. I just want to be the quarterback. I just want to be the one that helps build the, the, the actual blueprint so I understand where it's at, work with the other specialists, the other who's, so that the client is 10xing their life. Mm. They're not 10xing. They might 10x their business, might 10x their wealth, might 10x their retirement. That's, that's great. But it's their life they're trying to build for themselves, right? And so that's what the clients that I worked with at a deeper level, they were like, he... Eric is my first go-to. If I got a question, I pick up the phone, I call Eric. And so that's what my coaching clients are finding too. That the clients are like, I call my a CPA right away. Now, there's another side. Most CPAs would, would scream at the thought of their clients calling them that much. Right. Because, oh, I don't have time for that. Well, this is the wonderful part. When you change your model, you have time.
Mm. So you get more free time. So you want your clients to call you because if your clients are calling you, you have more opportunities for special projects, which you can then price and then you make even more profit and the clients are even happier. So good. That's yeah. so good. I mean, it, it's like the CPA pays for themselves. Like this is where you want to get. And I'm sure this is where you teach your, your, uh, you have courses, you have all kinds of great stuff we're going to show in a moment. But if I, if I think of my CPA and instead of thinking, man, they charge a lot of money. I don't want to talk to them except yeah. for once a year. That's yeah. the wrong thinking for me. If, if instead it's like, Ooh, last time I talked to Mike or Stephanie, they saved me $5,000. Sure. I wrote a, a check for 500 or a thousand, but they just earned me money. Now I, now I want to talk to them and, and yeah. you want to talk to me. Yeah. But, but here's the interesting thing. The most important thing to a business owner is return on investment. Yes. Okay. So what is the cost and what is the benefit? So mm -hmm. it's always a ROI. It's all, what's the value? Here's the value and here's the price. Well, and there's an ROI, I'll do it. But with a billable hour model, you don't know if there's ROI. You don't know because you don't know how long it's going to take the accountant to get the work done. And you're not sure what the value is because the accountant never talks to you about what the value is going to be at the end of the transaction. And most accountants are like, well, I can't guarantee that it's, they're going to make their money back. And here is the gem. This is mm -hmm. the gem. If anybody gets anything out of this, here's the absolute gem. Okay. It's not always about the money. Mm. It's about the transformation for the person. It could be the fact that they now have, can go to sleep at night knowing that their plan is getting them to where they want to go. That is what I call the MasterCard moment. That's priceless. Ooh. Clients will pay top dollar to be able to go to bed and sleep at night. Yes. Not You don't have to show them that, oh, well, you pay me $1,000 and, and you save 10. Well, you can't. we can't always do that. But if they go, I go, I have this plan and you're going to be able to go to sleep at night knowing that the work you're doing in your business is wow. contributing to your wealth, which is then going to get you to retirement at age 65 or 70, mm. if that's what you want to do. And you know that when you do leave this planet, because we all do, it's going to go to your kids and this charity and the rest of that. They can go to sleep at night. They're like, oh my gosh. And that to them is probably worth a hundred thousand, not yeah. 1000. That's a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. So if you're delivering $100,000 worth of value, should you be charging them 500 bucks for that one hour? Mm. It's like the, um, there's a story about Picasso being yeah. in a, do uh, you know where I'm going with this? Yeah, I use it. I use the story all the time. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you want me to sell it or you, you want Wait, to no, sell it? I, mean, I want to hear you sell it. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. So the story goes that Picasso is at a, at a French cafe and someone recognizes him and says, oh my gosh, you know, it's Picasso. Like, can I, can you draw a portrait of me just really quick? Yeah. And he says, absolutely. So he, he, you know, quickly sketches on a napkin, this amazing, amazing portrait. And mm -hmm. the woman takes it and it's like, oh my gosh, this is, you've captured me. This is amazing. How much do I owe you? And he's like 15,000 francs. And she's like, what that took that took you five minutes like what the heck why why do i have to pay you so much and he's like that's where you're mistaken it didn't take me five minutes it took me 50 years yes and you're not paying me for the five minutes you're paying me for the 50 years exactly. and and that's a cpa that's my yes. profession that's your profession correct yes exactly and so what becomes really interesting in this, the, this dilemma. And then, so what I have in the, in the book and the audio book and in the regular book and, and speci specifically in the coaching program is showing accountants how to have the right client conversation. Hmm. Because there's, there's a four letter word for accountants is called sell. Okay. That's a four letter word to an accountant. We don't want to be salespeople, hmm. right? We're professionals. We don't want to sell. So they get, you know, you have selling and you have a sales program and the rest of that. But we talk about a client conversation. How do you have the right client conversation mm. so that they see the value and then you can price it, which is an art and a science. And mm. so in my program and in the, in what I share with accountants and I just, I, I, I openly share it. I'm like, please just use this is that they find a way to actually get the client to create the value through the conversation. So the client will actually go, oh my God, it's worth it. This is amazing. And then they price it to here. And so what they end up getting is 
five, 10, 15 times what they ever would have gotten through a billable hour model. And so mm -hmm. what happens is, is that Picasso, which maybe takes them five minutes to come up with, is actually worth 100,000 or it's worth 50,000 in this, in this case to the client, but they see the value. But you see what happened with Picasso is there in that story, he actually built them after the fact. That's why the client, that's why the person was so price sensitive. If in, uh, Picasso had gone in the front end of the conversation had gone, the one goes, Oh, could you please do a painting for, him? and Costco goes, no problem. And, and he goes, it'll be 50,000 francs. She goes, Oh my God, Picasso for 50. Yeah. Here, 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 you bet. And then, Picasso, then Picasso went back, boom. And then he wrote it up and then he watched her, he looked at her and he talked to her through the whole process and, Oh yeah, it looks lovely. And, and then he turned it around and he showed it to her. She'd be like, Oh my God, I got a Picasso. Yes. He's really happy. Wow. That's it's okay. timing. It's timing. He should have shared on the front end. Well, yeah, but you have to have be able to talk and understand what the value. But it, you see, the client could have decided she could have decided before he even started whether or not she wanted to do that. But she agreed wow. ahead of time because she saw the value. I get a Picasso for 50,000. I'm all over that. But when you build them after the fact, all of a sudden they become price sensitive because now you've delivered the product and now they get charged after that. It's it's all psychological. That's so good. That is so good. Yeah, it's true, though. It's it's absolutely true. Um, I'm not even going to go there because we got five minutes left. I want to get to your course. So yeah, let's, we've been sharing some links here. I want to go right to a couple things. One is you have this master class where people are literally everybody getting a free gift. What is, what is this? Yeah, this is a, this is my free master class. So it's a, it's a, it's a four part video series, which basically goes through the entire, it goes through the accountant success formula model. So I call it the ASF master class, the accountant success formula master mm -hmm. class. It's totally free. You go on, you click on it. It's, it's typical one. You give me your email address and then you, you get through and you'll get through the, uh, the free master class. And wow. then at the end, and, and here's the thing, accountants don't like to be sold. They don't like to sell. At the end of the master class for all listeners, there's an offer for the online course. Mm -hmm. You know that ahead of time. It's at the end. So just so it's not like a bait and switch, because I, yeah. you know, I'm very oh, yeah. open friends say there's an offer for the master class at the end. And within the master class as well, there's an offer to potentially work with me one on one as well. Love it. Totally. But it's all and then if you're on there, you'll get on my email list and I do success tips videos once a week, um, totally free. Um, you get it right to your inbox and uh, all based on CPAs and the CPA firm from a CPA who's worked in a CPA firm in the profession. I've been in this for now. Oh, gosh, I, lost, I was thinking about that. I guess we're 33 years now, Kerry. Wow. It's been 33 awesome. years for me. Yeah, I've been in the I've been in the accounting profession and worked with like uh, over a thousand business owners and CPA firms. Mm. It's yeah. so good. So tell me about this. I come to your site. Yeah. What am I, what, what should I click on if I want to be part of the program? How do I become a member? These types of things. Well, and in any of the signups, you can, you can get free PDFs and you're instantly in my, so I'll call it my email list and you'll get, yeah. you'll get free uh, resources. It's all throughout that. If you want to reach out to me, you can click on the link called programs and the programs will be bring you to the three levels of programs that I have. I have an online course, which is a call it your D DIY, do it yourself model. Right. And it's offered at the end of the account free accountant success formula masterclass. Um, there's a one on one coaching premier coaching that I do. And then there's also what I call the partner program. And that's mm -hmm. for bigger accounting firms that are looking to have me come in and and work with them more deeply at a higher level. And um, again, there's links there. You just reach out and have a conversation with me. I'm always I'm always open for a conversation to see if we're a fit to work together. And ultimately, this program is for accountants that are frustrated or transformative. Right. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're they they're frustrated because they believe that they deserve more from their profession like I do. I believe accountants are overworked and undervalued and I'm out to change that for those that want it. I want to be able to give it to them and the freedom that the accountants get now and the clients that they serve impacted beyond compare. But um, yeah, it's 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 a freedom model. But again, most CPAs aren't showing the love. I am a CPA, so I want to show them as much love as I possibly can. Folks, website is ericsolbackincpa.com. The book is The Accountant Success Formula. First time ever out in audio. Amazing interview, bonuses. You got to check it out. You got to listen. If I, uh, here's what I'm going to do I'm going to talk to Stephanie and Mike, my CPA, and I'm going to say, look, 
I want to pay more. Um, I want you to create more value. And, and, and they're great. Like I said, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be talking to them a dozen times in the last three weeks, but what's next, Eric, I know that you're in, I think Canada right now. Yeah. You got big things going on. Give us 60 seconds. What's next for Eric? Well, yeah. So right now I am, I'm actually at Glen Abbey golf course. Is that, if anybody's a golfer out there, if they ever seen tight one of, Tiger Woods, probably four top shots he's ever made was right outside this window. So it's, oh it's dark God. now, but the 18th green is right here. One of the top shots that he's ever made. We're here putting on a, a, a presentation for some business owners. Like I said, I'm carving off a piece of the accountant success formula called the four planning pillars, showing the dentist what this is in the thought process. And mm -hmm. then they're going to want to go and work with the CPA that I'm, I'm going to have at this event. So I'm looking to do that for them. But ultimately, what I'm looking to do is to impact as many CPAs I can across Canada and the United States. I coach CPAs in Canada and U.S. because I don't I don't teach tax. That's your job. You know that I don't teach, you know, financial planning. That's your job. We know how to do that stuff. But it's the business model. Business model mm. is universal. So the problem is the business model and the solution is updating it. So good. Folks, tag your account, tag your CPA if you are one. Share this with your friends. Eric, it's been awesome working with you. Can't wait to chat in January. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and thank right. you for uh, adding so much value today. Hey, and thank you again, Carrie. This is fantastic. I, I'm looking forward for everybody to get that audiobook in their hands. That's thanks Definitely. to you. Appreciate it. Awesome. Take care. We'll see you.